Hi everybody, welcome to the Off the Grid Revolution. It's like uh, toward the end of November now and lots of crops are gone, but uh, lots of crops are still around. I want to show you a few things today. Uh, this was the raised bed that we had. You may have recalled last uh, time we had a video that there were tomato plants and pepper plants in here. We have pulled them all out. The only thing that didn't die were the greens. And let me tell you what, look how, look how pretty and yummy that is. And, and it's delicious. I'll leave it there and come back and pick. Oh, that's sweet. When this stuff freezes, it gets sweeter, almost like candy. I love it. Um, you can see we've got some damage on the raised bed. We've already accumulated some recycled, uh, repurposed lumber to repair this with. When you're building raised beds, find old treated lumber because the new stuff is toxic. It's got cooties in it that you don't want in your food. Uh, got chemicals in it. Um, we took a bunch of uh, new soil and added it to the bed because we had produced so much uh, food from here. I was afraid the soil was depleted. We also add some compost. You can see eggshells for calcium. They're really good for your garden. So keep your eggshells and toss them in the garden. Um, so we got, and at the second bed down here, we did exactly the same thing. Pulled up all the plants and uh, put a bunch more soil in. This is about half of the Little Red Truck's uh, load of uh, compost from a horse farm. It's a combination of sawdust and horse manure that's rotted for about five years and it's excellent medium. Excellent medium. I, I was I just going to ask you that. Yeah, it's an excellent medium. Now and, when do you add the eggshells? Um, whenever you get them basically. Just stick them in. Because uh, they take quite, they take a while to decompose, so put them in and work around them. Next year, there'll probably still be eggshells in here, and that will be just fine. The only thing I need to make sure is um, set them around for a while so that they um, so once they stop smelling, that's when they're safe. Okay. Okay. So if you leave them out in your mini composter or in a pile or something, once you can pick them up and they don't smell like rotten eggs, that's when they're good enough. Now, I have one more question about compost. Um, I've seen people add things like banana peels and coffee grounds. Yeah, good stuff. Okay. And just about anything that will turn brown will be okay. good compost. Just about anything. Thing, that, thing to remember, nothing that's had any meat or dairy. Both of those produce um, uh, things that are not good for you, bacteria that are not good for you, meat and, and dairy. None of that in your compost. Okay. Um, sometimes you might, like when I make a soup, um, if I think I might want to add some of it to compost after I'm done, if I make a bunch, I don't use milk. I use uh, soy milk or coconut milk or uh, almond milk or something else. Um, I want to show you, we put some uh, materials down to enrich the soil and to keep the grass from growing. This is um, old um, wood chips, real old wood chips. Um, raspberries, believe it or not, you're going to love this, Joe. Are still coming. Look under here. Wow. Look under here. So st we still got some good raspberries. I didn't know that they they came mm. on so late. They don't. We planted them too late. Hmm. They're good. We planted them too late, so they are, they came out too late. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we had one frost and covered them. It didn't get them. It's going down to 28 tonight. So tomorrow, the only thing left to harvest here is the um, the leaves. Now, Sean, Sean tells me all you have to do is dry these and use them for tea. That right, Sean? Anything special to do? Just dry them and use them for tea. Okay, so. Hmm, that's gonna make a lovely spot of tea. Mm -hmm. I like it. You could probably use them green or dry. Okay, I can do that. They probably would steep better dry, huh? You almost have to boil them when they're green. Would you guess? Well, I wouldn't boil them. No, okay. Them. Okay. That's how I do it. I just steep them either way. Okay. Super hot water, let it steep. They're going to keep better okay. if they're dry. Okay. Now, raspberry leaf tea is good for respiratory ailments, right? Right. Good for flu. They're good for uh, colds. Um, last year, uh, Chris and I, our cold went away in 24 hours. And it's also great for pregnant women for getting ready for childbirth. And it's also good for um, helping uh, fortify mother's milk. For, okay. Uh, breastfeeding. 
Fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you. Now, I don't have any plans on breastfeeding, but I'm going to have some tea anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know how that breastfeeding goes. If I, if I start lactating, don't worry. Next week, we'll put an emergency video out there. Don't do it, dudes. Don't do it, dudes. <laughs> it's not worth it. Um, this for the is, record, I've used raspberry leaf tea for allergies and no lactating. Okay. The little red pickup truck is putting an end to one of the Occupy projects. The Off the Grid Revolution had a bike repair shop here. It's just being relocated. There you go. It's just being relocated. Just being relocated. Yeah, that's right. Okay. The project continues. <laughs> yes. It's just moving around. We have same one, same goals to be achieved. We have five children's bikes in here, and if we got one or two of them fixed for Christmas, Sean, that'd be awesome. Because we have kids. We go to the uh, the Pope's program uh, up the street where he houses uh, children. We're and at their six mothers. minutes, Randy. Okay, um, six uh, bikes uh, available. If we get some fixed for them, that'd be wonderful. All right, let's take a quick look in the off the grid uh, greenhouse. The off the grid revolution greenhouse. We were plowing today at a garden, and some of the stuff that I salvaged was uh, bok choy. I'm going to work on this. It'll, it, that looks kind of funky now, but it'll come back. Um, it can take some freezing. This is celery. I've never been successful with celery, but someone at the, at the garden was. I'm going to see what I can do with that, too, and bring it, along, bring it back to life. In other videos, you saw the infirmary. Well, the infirmary's been producing, and I've been eating from it. You got some cherry tomatoes that are looking really good. They look great. Don't they? Mm -hmm. We got some dill that's looking uh, a little peaked, but it's very tasty. We have parsley that's coming up. And check this out. This thing was a skinny little two inch high thing that nobody thought would grow. Wow. We got a pepper from it. And a rather sizable one. Yeah, nice one. Um, it's not long for this world, but then what is? It's all temporary. Um, How Buddhist of you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, parsley still doing well. We planted a couple weeks ago spinach. Okay. Nice. It looks it's, really it's good. It's coming up. I've been harvesting the daylights out of this lettuce. I can't keep up with eating enough of it. So when you got before you guys leave, you got to go through and thin out my, my lettuce plants because there's way too much of it. This was another one of those deals where we didn't think this thing had a chance to make it. Wow. It's producing. So part of it is um, if you have enough time to nurture things, mm -hmm. you can actually bring them back rather well. Like people. Yeah. Sure, that's right. You can bring people back from the edge of being a Republican um, if you just nurture them some. That's all it takes. Um, so more pepper plants here. They're just starting to come out with some peppers. I don't know whether they'll get anywhere or not, but I'm going to try. We're at um, eight minutes. Okay. Uh, so we have two minutes left. We'll, we'll just stay up here instead of going downstairs to look at the uh, uh, anything else. We'll just talk about what's up here. Um, you can look over here, Joe. You can see the windows are open. Yes. The, the heat from the house is coming into the greenhouse. Earlier today, when it was sunny out, the heat from the greenhouse was going into the house. This temperature modulation means that when it gets down to 28 degrees outside and this room starts to chill down to 28, heat from the house will come out here and we'll, we'll be able to survive 28 degrees tonight. Fantastic. Um, we're going to go down to 21 tomorrow. We'll see how that works. <laughs> the day that it goes down and everything freezes is the day you come in and harvest whatever's left. Okay. And let's end with a Buddhist meditation bell. Bye, everybody.